Biochemical engineers have a critical role in translating life science discoveries into actual products and processes. University College London fully integrates engineering and biotechnology in its programmes. Its graduates were involved in all stages of development and manufacture of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccination. We visited them at their state-of-the-art research facility in London to learn more. The UK's biggest challenge in the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic was to match its renowned prowess in vaccine discovery with manufacturing. Researchers and graduates from the UCL Department of Biochemical Engineering have helped to create a safe and efficient process right through to mass production. Biochemical engineers have played a central role in establishing the UK's reputation as a world leader in vaccine research. But what's special about UCL's program is the close collaboration with industry at every stage of research, development and manufacture. If we think about a new therapeutic, we take care of all the stages from his sort of concept, working with the life scientist, uh, developing the process in order to make the new therapeutics and ensuring that they, essentially they, it's made in a robust way, the process is safe and also cost effective. So we work very collaboratively in multidisciplinary teams most of the time. Um, we work with life scientists, so biochemists, biologists and chemists. Uh, we work with people who take business decisions and do project management, uh, but especially we work with uh, people in the medical scientist field, uh, especially those who are responsible for uh, the discovery and the development of uh, new medicines. UCL alumni have had direct involvement with the success of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Dr Richard Tarrant did his PhD here and went on to oversee manufacture of the vaccine used in the crucial phase one clinical trials. What we were trying to do is uh, shorten the timelines as much as we could um, without making any compromises on the quality of the product. The main purpose of phase one the clinical trial is for patient safety. So we needed to make sure that we have a product which is safe uh, for people who are volunteering to take part in the trial. You obviously need the technical capability to manufacture the products, but you also need expertise in good manufacturing practice. So this is the term that's used um, to make sure that products are made safely and consistently. Um, so you need to have a good knowledge of uh, what the requirements are for that and also the particular product type. The trials were set up to expedite vaccine manufacturing, meaning that even from this early stage, the plan was to scale up the number of doses made from hundreds to hundreds of thousands. Where you need to make a, a vaccine that will be manufactured globally, it's understanding the different engineering principles that are needed um, to make the same vaccine over and over again using different pieces of equipment because within different environments you will have different equipment. So it's understanding how you can translate a process that has been manufactured in one vessel type or configuration at one volume or scale um, to another vessel which is bigger, um, probably very different in terms of its configuration from the um, vessel that you used to develop the process in, but at the end have exactly the same product with the same critical quality attributes um, that needs to be given to a patient. As you move to the later stages of the clinical trials, just before you get regulatory approval, you need to think then about the commercial manufacture of the vaccine. And that's where another one of our UCL graduates, Mark Proctor, came in. Uh, so Mark is a director of operations at one of the AstraZeneca manufacturing sites. And he basically put together the supply chain necessary to, to make all the vaccine in, I think, the billions of doses that have now been made and have been supplied to, I think, over 170 different countries. One key innovation in the scaling up of COVID-19 vaccine manufacture as part of the pandemic response was establishing multiple manufacturing sites worldwide, minimising environmental impact. And that had the advantage that it minimised the transportation distances for the raw materials to the factories, but it also minimised the transportation of the actual vaccine to the patients that need them. 
The expectation now is that vaccines will continually be developed to address new COVID-19 variants and may even be administered annually like the flu vaccine. Whatever shape the future of therapeutic manufacture takes, UCL's graduates will be making a significant contribution.